Hi, I'm Sarah Rickards, owner of Well Embroidered, and in today's short video tutorial I want to show you a, another gold work technique. This one's called chipping or chips. It's a really pretty sparkly technique and it's used to cover felt padding. Um, basically you're stitching down little pieces of gold uh, like beads. Um, so first things first, I need to show you how to cut your chips and what sort of length you should be looking for. So, here we have our bright check. It's a continuous coil of wire that we actually need to cut into really small little pieces like this. The size of the pieces, now they're about as long as they are wide, but there is a little bit of variation in the length and that's okay. You might have a smaller or bigger gap that would work better with a slightly different size, but you're aiming to keep them fairly consistent and even. You wanna make sure that you're using a really nice sharp pair of scissors, so you get a nice clean cut. What you don't want is any little tags sticking up from the ends of the chips, because that can catch on your thread and it looks messy. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to cut a few chips for you. We're working on a velvet board. This just helps to stop the chips from bouncing around once they're cut. So using your nice sharp scissors, make a clean sharp cut. trying to keep them all nice and regular in length. So like I said, you want them about as long as they are wide. It's very tempting as you're cutting more and more of these to get longer and longer and longer, but you wanna try and avoid that. If you keep them to this length, then when you stitch them down, they'll reflect the light really beautifully and make it extra sparkly. So now I want to show you how to apply chipping or chip work into the center of this felt area here. So it's gonna to totally cover the felt area. We're going to be using a double strand of Gutmann's thread and we need to lightly run it through our beeswax like that. I've put a knot in the end and we're just going to start our thread off with a knot on the front and then three small stitches in the felt padding and then the knot gets cut away. So bring your needle up. thread on a chip and it goes through the needle like you would a bead. Take the stitch down the length of the chip and then you can use your malore to ensure that it lies nice and flat on the surface of the felt. And bring, the, bring the needle up again, thread on a new chip and take a stitch down again, the same length as the chip, so that it lies flat on the surface of the felt and right next to that previous one we've just done. And you'll notice that I'm varying the angles at which my chips are lying. And that helps create the sparkly effect as well. If your stitch is too long, then you'll end up with a little bit of thread visible either end of your chip. If it's too short, then your chip won't lie flat with the surface of the felt. It will stand up on its end and we don't want that. Yeah. 
You're also trying to make sure that there is no felt visible in between the chips. And I'll show you a little close up image towards the end of this video so you can see exactly what I mean. They say that if you've got this nice and smooth, you should be able to lay, run a piece of silk fabric over the surface without it snagging. And so that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming for all the felt to be covered, varying angles of our chips. The chips ought to be square in size. So nice and small when you cut them and no thread to be visible as well. It's very easy to get carried away and start cutting these longer when you've got a big area to fill in. Try not to do that.